Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we're starting a brand new project, something that's been on my to-do list for a while, but we finally have all the pieces necessary to get this thing put together, or at least I think we do. So I have a literal pile of boats here in the backyard, and of course I'm gonna make things difficult for myself by trying to pull out the one at the very bottom. This one's literally split in half. We're gonna be working on this some other project in the future. So this thing is an AMF Force 5 sailboat. I got it for free on Craigslist. We've tried to sell it for $20, nobody took it. We tried giving it away, nobody took it. We tried leaving it out by the trash cans with a free sign. Some people tried to take it but couldn't figure out how to get it onto their car. So it refuses to leave the property. Now I don't have a mast, sails, or rigging for that Force 5 hull, but we do have this old electric trolling motor. I think this thing cost me about $8 at an auction. And I have some pretty large solar panels, which a viewer traded to me in exchange for that Apollo 100 DNA sequencer that I got in another video. I never figured out what to do with that thing, so I turned it into solar panels. Now that brings me to our sponsor for this video, Nornvin, who sent me the heart of this solar boat project, the battery system. Now I've looked at portable battery banks before on this channel, but this thing is an absolute beast. The Nornvin PB76M has a 1500 watt output, which just blows away any of the other ones I've looked at. Now it is a little heavier than the others. The manual says it's 19.3 kilos, and I'll have to convert that to freedom units. But this thing could keep a small house running for a while during a power outage, and I think it's going to be just great for that solar boat. Now it has solar charging inputs, and it can supposedly handle up to a 36 volt solar panel, which is what we have, so hopefully we can just hook our panels straight into it. It didn't really come with any cables for that, it just has this AC power cord. And then this entire box just seems to have one USB cable. However, I'm pretty sure I can figure something out to interface this with our solar panels and our 12 volt motor. If we want to use it for AC power, it has multiple inverter outlets, it has a DC barrel jack outlet, it's got regular old DC outputs, jumper cable connection, it's got all kinds of inputs and outputs on here. Even though it didn't really come with any cables, it does have a storage compartment in the top, so we can put our devices in there or our charging cables. It's got a light on the back. Again, this is a sponsored video, but it's not gonna be the typical review that you might have seen before. We're actually gonna use this in a DIY project. So let's jump right into that. So just like all my free boats, this one's definitely going to need some work before we can use it. So first off, let's get it cleaned up, hosed down, and see if there are any major holes in it. We've definitely got some scratches and dings on this hull. That's probably the worst hole. And there's some uh, structural marine grade packing tape sealing up some other holes. Pretty good scrape right here. I'm using this two-part epoxy stuff to fill all the holes and cracks in the fiberglass. So now that we've got our old sailboat hull looking much prettier, well, less ugly. Well, it's red. Anyway, we're gonna start putting some of the other equipment on it and seeing what else we need to do to turn this from a boat into a solar boat. We need to make sure that our Norvin power bank works with this old solar panel. And since it didn't come with much for cables, I went online and got a standard solar to Anderson connector. All right, it's a little bit hard to see the screen out here in the sun, but the Nornvin power bank is getting about 200 watts in from the solar panel, and that's before I've even cleaned the solar panel very well, so it's still a little bit dirty. I'd say that's pretty good so far. While we let the battery bank charge up, I've got a couple of these little torpedoes or fuel tanks or whatever these are that I got from Axeman Surplus. I'm gonna use these as floats on the ends of the solar panels, and we're gonna use the solar panels essentially like wings. I was thinking of making a canopy over the boat with the solar panels, but I think it would be a little too top heavy, it wouldn't give me a lot of headroom, and Peter Sreeple already did that, so I don't need to copy his project. So we're gonna paint these fuel tank things red to match the boat and use them as outriggers. All right, so we can get power into the Nornvin battery bank using just standard solar cells, but what about getting power out? We need pretty high amperage DC to power our trolling motor. Now again, it didn't come with cables for this, but I asked the company and they said that these Vito Man jumper cables should work with the weird connectors that are on here. I did have to buy these myself on Amazon, but hopefully they'll do what I need. So this plugs into the battery bank. And this end would be for your car battery if you need to jumpstart your car using this, or in our case, we're gonna be trying to run a trolling motor on it. 
Now this little procedure here is definitely not recommended by Norvin, by Minn Kota, or by the makers of these milk crates. But here on the Save It For Parts channel, we like to experiment a little bit, use old secondhand stuff along with new stuff in ways it was never intended for. We've got DC mode on. And there we go, it's working right away. I do have to keep pushing this boost button to enable the power out to the trolling motor. It's not really intended to provide constant power. It's just supposed to be hooked up for a few minutes to charge your battery pack enough to jumpstart your car. So let's try speed two on the trolling motor. I'm hearing a little squeaking. I think we could use some oil or lubrication of some sort on the prop. All right, we've gone all the way up to speed number five. So the Norvin battery pack is working just great with all speeds on this trolling motor. I think this is probably gonna work out for us. So I wanna mount the trolling motor permanently on the stern here, but this is just a hollow plastic shell on this sailboat. There's nothing to really screw into, so I'm gonna need to get into the hull empty space, put some nuts and washers on the backside to mount the trolling motor. So I'm gonna cut a hole in here, and I'm gonna put in these hatch covers that I got from University Reuse for $10. I've got a couple of these, so I might put one in the bow as well, use it as a storage compartment, or just, access to the bilge so I can pump water out of there. Maybe I'll run some wiring down there, we'll see. Since I can't put one of those access hatches in every part of the boat and I need to secure some stuff to the sides here, namely those solar panels, I'm gonna have to use these drywall anchors. These have a built-in toggle, so you drill a larger hole in something like this, or your wall, insert the toggle through, and then the bolt tightens it from the back. That way, you don't have to actually get in there and put a nut and a washer on the backside. I'm gonna put in the solar panels with these hinges so that they can fold up kind of like wings for transportation and storage. The Norvin power bank here is also useful for fabricating the boat because I can run my power tools right off the power bank anywhere on my property. I don't have to drag an extension cord out here in the driveway. I haven't used a power bank before that actually provides enough juice for a drill, but I think this one will. So I'm setting up my solar panel wings and I wanna make sure they're all lined up straight with the boat. Now I could do a bunch of fancy math and get out some tapes and chalk lines, or I could just get a nice good look at everything from up above and wiggle it around till it's straight. So we are very close to finished with the solar boat. We have pretty much everything assembled. We have our solar panel wings, our outrigger floats, our motor, our control station. I wanted to put the control station farther up as a foot pedal, but this is the farthest it'll reach with those cables. So it'll probably have to be a hand station, and I'm just going to sit there. Um, the weather is getting a little more interesting here, so we've had to wrap this up. We've had kind of limited opportunity to work on the thing, and it definitely won't fit in the garage like this, so we're getting it done as quick as we can. I do want to put a seat in there, and I want to do one or two other things, but other than that, I think it's ready for a test run. So I'm trying to get loaded up and take this out for a test, but I'm running into some issues with the size of the boat relative to the size of the trailer and the position of the car. Looks like um, we'll have to shut the car first and then load the trailer. Well, we've got this thing all trussed up on the trailer with every ratchet strap I've got, so I'm really hoping that holds together. We've got our solar wings braced. We've got everything ratcheted down to the hull. We've got it ratcheted onto the trailer. So I think we can make it to the lake without anything breaking. We've gotten the thing out to the lake and we've got it launched. We almost didn't make it here with all the nice Minnesota potholes trying to bounce everything apart. So I did have to do some emergency zip tying again. It's not really a very trailerable boat, unfortunately, or at least not on Minnesota roads. They're just too rough for it.
Okay, well, so far it's working. We're on the lowest speed setting. We're just trying to get out past the weeds here into the middle of the lake so we don't get everything tangled around the prop. And it looks like I spoke too soon. We have weeds around the prop. That's the problem with these little Minnesota lakes. They're just full of stuff. So it's really hard to maneuver anywhere near shore without just getting salad on your propeller. Okay, we are out away from the worst of the salad, and the boat is working pretty well. Little trolling motor is very responsive, very easy to steer. In fact, it's almost too easy. I've been oversteering a little bit. Now, currently, I'm just running the trolling motor off the DC cigar lighter jack here, and I'm not quite sure what amperage that'll take. I think it's something around 10 amps. We've been sitting at like 3 to 5 amps, but we haven't cranked up the motor to full power, so... If that cuts out on me, I might switch over to those jumper cables and see what happens. I can definitely feel the acceleration here. This little boat handles surprisingly well. So at power level three, we are going about three miles an hour. Okay, power level four has just cut out. So I think we've used too many amps on the Norvin bank, at least through the cigarette lighter. All right, we've switched over to using the jumper pack interface for our trolling motor. So we're gonna turn that on and we're just gonna start right at five. Oh wow, I could really feel the acceleration there. We're actually making a little bit of a wake now. Oh, I'm starting to spin out here. It is, the steering really is fiddly. If I just nudge the little pedal, the boat starts spinning. So it looks like our maximum speed is about five miles an hour, which honestly is pretty good. That's better than paddling. Not quite as good as sailing, but for a little electric boat made out of garbage, I'm pretty happy. Now, the only downside to using the jump starter interface for the Norvin pack is that it cuts out after about a minute. It's not really designed to keep running continuously. It's designed to jump start your car, and you really only need it for 30 seconds to a minute for that. So I have to keep pushing this boost button to get it to turn back on. Again, I'm abusing the Norvin pack. It's not meant to do that. They do not recommend that you do that. It is pretty entertaining, though, to get the boat up to speed five on the trolling motor. Now, if we want speed three, if we want a nice sedate three miles an hour, we can just use that uh, cigarette plug, and that works just fine. That seems to run continuously. Now, Axeman did donate me the little pod outriggers. Normally, those are like 25 bucks a piece, but the weight to flotation ratio on those is fantastic, and this boat is super stable. I think I could just stand up in this and fish if I wanted, and this little motor control is made to be a foot pedal, so I could operate it with my feet and cast a rod, no problem. And the Norvin pack is actually gaining capacity even while I'm doing this. So at 248 watts with these two panels, I'm up to 87% even while I'm running the motor at full bore. So I tried flying my drone around to get some good aerial shots of the boat, but all my batteries were dead because I forgot to charge these last time. And then I remembered, hey, we've got this giant Norvin battery pack right here. We can just charge the drone batteries up while we're boating around. So this thing is already working great as a little electric aircraft carrier. This is quite honestly one of the best projects that I've ever made, or at least one of the most successful right off the bat. I'm out here on the very first test run. Everything is working exactly the way I thought it would. The boat is working great. The Norvin battery pack is working great. The solar panels are working great. Even the little trolling motor, the controls are great. And again, I'm pretty impressed with that Norvin battery pack. Um, I wasn't quite sure if it was going to work for this. I definitely am using it for a non-intended function, and it's working great. I'm just cruising down the lake right now against the wind at level three, and the battery pack's working fine. Currently, we're running the motor and we're charging the drone battery, and we just jumped up to 90%, so we are still making power from those solar panels, even with all this output. So I think we're gonna wrap up the video here with an outstanding success from this boat project. Great success from the Norvin Battery Pack. Thank you again to Norvin for sponsoring this video. 
for giving me this gigantic battery pack that is capable of running a trolling motor on an electric boat while getting power from random free solar panels I got. The Nordenvin pack definitely doesn't have all the features that some other battery packs do, but it makes up for it in sheer power and capacity. I'll throw the links to the Nordenvin battery pack down below if anyone wants to check them out. Usually with one of these DIY projects I say to tune in for part two when we have it more successful, but I don't know if there's really much to improve on this boat. Thanks for watching. Tune in to see if we do anything else with this boat or other projects in the future, and we'll see you next time.